I'm Amber Zoe Thorne and today I'm here with the director and producer of Elita Battle Angel. What first made you want to join this project? We discovered the project for ourselves in 1999, Jim Cameron and, my, and myself. It's the story of Alita, mm -hmm. and it's her story that we think is so relatable to audiences today. For me, I was drawn to it because I knew Jim was developing. I didn't know a, not, a lot about the manga, but I read his script. It was just so captivating, the way he took the manga and turned it into a Jim Cameron film. With a great love story, high stakes, incredible world building and mm -hmm. spectacle. It was the first time an anime manga character would be brought to life, photo real. And that was always his vision for it. Turning a piece of work, which is manga, into an English-spoken blockbuster, what was the biggest challenge that you faced doing that and transitioning between the two? I think the biggest challenge was uh, creating a character that would play the correct homage to what manga's put down on the page, but one that was accessible for an audience. Robert and the design team created in Alita someone that we think, through her, you will really see her soul. What was your favorite character from the film? If you can't say Alita, then who would you say was your favorite and why? I had to say Alita. I mean, I've shot the movie, I shot it with Rosa Salazar. The other day I was watching a shot over and over again because it was like, she feels so real, you feel like you can like touch her hair, and yet it's somebody who does not exist. And that's, I've never seen that before. And what Alita does as a character, she touches other characters and she transforms their lives. So the relationship she has with Ido shows him how to approach parenthood mm -hmm. differently, something that is very relatable to many people. As we meet each of those other characters, they become very identifiable. The film is set in a post-apocalyptic America in around the 26th century. Where did you take inspiration from to visually create what you wanted that time frame to look like? We really saw it as, as a melting pot of the world, and there are certain um, elements of it that caused us to make it set in Latin America, to put it closer to the equator. Even though he said it in, in the States, actually like around Kansas City, yeah. Jim very scientifically thought, you know, for a space elevator to actually work, it would have to be close to the equator. So I thought, oh, great, that puts us in South America. <laughs> so we were able to look at places like Sao Paulo, mm -hmm. places like Panama City, places even a little bit like, you know, Havana, what they have to offer from an architecture architectural standpoint and that becomes the foundation on which on top of which Iron City is built. I think that sounds amazing. I'm certainly very excited about the film. What's the next project that you're working on? Currently working on four Avatar sequels in production on right now. Several different things going on. Escape from New York, I'm working on that. This is the biggest budget movie mm -hmm. I've done by far, but I've followed that up with a $7,000 movie. Thank you both so much for your time. I am really, really excited to be able to see this film. I've seen it at the trailer and it's absolutely incredible. Don't forget to give a big thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Thank you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Well, look at you. May your dreams bring you Not bad or good. That part's up to you. I don't mean to be rude, but am I supposed to know you? Actually, we just met. world. The strong prey on the weak down here. The sun shines upon you again. Hear this prayer in my heart. Does it bother you that I'm not completely human? And we'll never I'd do whatever I had to for you. I'd give you whatever I have. I'd give you my heart. Alida, they will come for you. Someone very special. May you stay.